Example 2. In section 10.1, the data from the table below was determined to have a strong linear correlation with 0.993. You can go back and rewatch that video as to how we got that or look at the table that was created. We're asked to create a linear regression model and use it to predict y, the outcome, the dependent variable, when x, the independent variable, the input, is 8. And we'll use three digits after the decimal for the model, but in our prediction, our y value output, we're only going to use one digit. Now, up until this point, I've been writing all of my tables vertically, which is completely fine, except for you might actually want to write them horizontally and save yourself some time because your first two, in this case, rows, are already written. So, you know, if we let this be the x row with 2, 4, and 7 going across instead of down, then we can add those numbers to get a total of 13. Let y be my second row, add the 1, 3, 5, and get 9, and keep going. Our next, in this case, row is to multiply the x's and the y's. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 3 is 12. 7 times 5 is 35. And if I add 2, 12, and 35, I get 49. Be careful. I've been using these straight lines to kind of be markers, but don't accidentally think they're ones. So continuing on, I need to make my x squared column. So 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, and 7 squared is 49. Adding 4, 16, and 49, I get 69. And again, this data is actually all in a 10.1 video. y squared, 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. Adding 1, 9, and 25, we get 35. And I'm ready to find my variables of my regression model. First, we have to find A. The first number in A is the sum of y's. So we'll start off with 9 times. Notice this one didn't start with n. Then I have the sum of x's squared. So the x's that were squared, I want their sum, which is 69. Again, I'm just reading off the formula, which I don't have posted here, but you can look back in your notes to see it. Then we have minus and it's just the sum of x total, which would be the 13, multiplied with the sum of the x times y total, which is the 49. This is all divided by n. Now remember, n was 3 because there's 1, 2, 3 pet pair sets of data. Then I multiply with the sum of x squared, which is the 69, which we've actually used in a very similar spot in the formula still have minus in the denominator, and now I need the sum of x's quantity squared. So I need the 13 squared. So even though it's kind of above, it was squared in this case. So going straight across the top on my calculator, 9 times 36 minus 13 times 49. I get negative 16, and the same process in the denominator gives me 38. As I divide those, I get negative 4.210, etc. And now I'm going to go ahead and find B. This starts off with N, which the other formula did not because they're different numerators. The sum of XY, so I take the 49 and multiply it, minus, and now I want the sum of X's, which is the 13. So it's starting to look like the formula above, but then it says the sum of Y, which is 9. Notice these are not squared. The denominator is going to be 38. How do I know it's going to be 38? Yeah, remember it's the same denominator. The two formulas have identical denominators. So really I'm looking at 30 divided by 38 to get 0.7894, etc. And I'm ready to go ahead and list my regression model. I need y equals a plus bx. So taking a and only going three digits after the decimal, that one will not round up. So y equals negative 0.421 
plus b, b is positive, so I can go ahead and do a plus, the third digit is a 9 and it will not round up, so plus the 0.789, don't forget the x, and now I can copy this into my regression model. And the next thing we need to do is make our prediction. So we've been told that x equals 8, right? We were told to predict when x equals 8. And so I'm going to come to my model, and where x is, I will insert the 8 and calculate it to get 5.89, etc., rounding to one place after the decimal. 5.9 is my prediction. So we were never told what the input and the output represent, but we saw what happened when the input was 2, 4, and 7, and now we know that when the input is 8, our output would be 5.9, which it seems in line with these numbers, where you want to be careful that all of a sudden you get an output that's like 59 or 0.59, and the numbers of output were getting larger as the input got larger. So I'm expecting an answer larger than 5 if my input is 8, which is larger than 7. So I'm gauging that it's in the right area.